Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. If the title didn't give it away, uh, Joe and I broke up. Yes, it's not clickbait. I know I clickbaited that once and it, it was just a joke. Not a very funny one anymore. Anyway, what you need to know about the breakup is it was very amicable, mutual, very loving, respectful. That being said, I will not allow any disparaging comments towards him. Um, but yeah, it hurts. It's heartbreaking. It's complicated. Life is also hard for a variety of other reasons, but whatever. So why? Why am I making this video? I know in my last video I said I was going through a tough time. I filmed it when I was really happy and then things kind of came crashing down. And I said I would be taking some time off and everyone in the comments was so supportive and I appreciate that, but there are contractual obligations involved and I really want to be a person that does what I say I'm going to do. You know, real life doesn't always just stop because you're devastated. And this is a video I committed to making several months ago. However, if you're gonna watch this video, you're gonna have to acknowledge some warnings. I won't look pretty for probably 90% of it. I might not smile much. There might not be as much energy as usual. I might be kind of cynical. I know Valentine's Day is usually my favorite holiday but now there's a lot of memories attached to it. Joe and I actually got engaged on Valentine's Day so I love irony. So that's a silver lining. Without further ado let's Step one, you say you need to talk. I mean, step one, I made three sketches. One fitted with spaghetti straps, one flared with spaghetti straps, and one also flared but with off the shoulder straps. First, I pitted the fitted against the flared, and my followers chose the flared, which is great because the design can be inclusive for those experiencing their ninth month of pregnancy or me who will be expecting a belly full of chocolate. Next, the citizens of Macarica voted in favor of droopy strips over spaghetti straps. What a load of pasta haters and pastas, if you will, anyway. And then we had to make the gluten free, keto friendly option. Now to pick fabric. This is the fabric I bought when I was originally planning on making this dress a couple months ago. And then this is a fabric I just picked out a couple days ago. And I think I'm gonna go with this one because it feels more authentic. Like this one is giving bubblegum sunshine and unicorn. And then this is giving the shade of pink you choose to wear in a funeral. If someone kidnapped your family and said they'd only release them if you wore pink to a funeral. And you said, I don't want to wear pink to a funeral. That's disrespectful. And they said, you have to pick one. And you say, I'll pick this one because it's the most somber. Funeral pink. To start off, you're going to cut three yards of fabric in half along the fold that should already be there from when it was wrapped on a bolt. Cut off a yard of this and set it aside to use as your top. Then sew the remaining long strips together at the sides, mark where you want your hem to hit, and fold and iron it down. Then sew it while absorbing the quiet, gentle companionship of a loved one. I must mention that that is an aspect of this whole difficult season for which I am insanely grateful. In the past few weeks, I have not been alone for more than an hour or two. My dad and various friends have spent the night, and my brother Micah stayed almost two whole weeks. A caveat to all that's though is the fact that I only have one bathroom. And while I have no problem filling up the occasional Folgers can, some friends and family are a bit too posh and insist on relieving themselves somewhere proper. So after the hardest step of prepping the new toilet seat, it was time for the trivial formality of deciding where the new bathroom would go. The attic seemed my only option. This will work. Not quite. Nice room. Yes, my dad and I did make this bathroom from scratch, and by my dad and I, I mean I painted a couple things and my dad built the bathroom from scratch. What is that? Oh gosh. And now a word from my favorite sponsor, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is the internet's largest online consignment thrift store. Last month, I ordered a variety of fabulous pieces from ThreadUp. And while I will no longer be wearing them in any of the scenarios which I intended to wear them, they're still adorable pieces. Like this Endeavor shirt, originally $76, but on ThreadUp, only $24. Paired with these Zara pants, originally $43.99, but I paid $24.99. My favorite purchase, though, has got to be these Zara strappy heels, originally $92, but the thread up price was $45.99. It's the perfect date night outfit, or you know, black is the color for morning, so perfect for that too. I bought this Travel Up by Zara shirt, originally $60, but I paid only $10, because I thought it was perfect for Valentine's season. And I still think it's perfect because it's the same color as the broken heart emoji, especially when paired with these Zara jeans. I love that the color is so faded, like my dreams. I'm equally in love with these assorted brand heels, originally $60, but I paid $21.99, which I don't think it may be really cute to wear to a bridal shower, but I think they go equally well with the shower of tears. And they go great with this simple retro shirt. Did you know ThreadUp has a new feature that makes it easier to shop than ever? If you just click on the link in my description, you'll be taken to a page where you can see all the things I bought and shop for similar items. They've made it so easy to get outfit inspiration. You know, for when your mental load is too heavy and intense and you don't have time to think about anything else but you still want to look cute. And when you shop, please do me and yourself a favor by using the code Makara for 35% off your first purchase. Back to the dress. Cut some thread to be a few inches longer than the circumference of your rib cage. Then do a gather stitch all along the top of your skirt while watching a movie that most matches your current mood. Wow,
Hate my instructions? Well, I've been planning on giving better instructions ever since I watched Mia Maples follow the tutorial for my last Valentine's Day dress. Because even though her final product turned out adorable, I felt bad that the process of following my video seemed quite mentally taxing. So for this video, the instructional value is going to be way worse, like actually worse than you can imagine. I'm sorry. It's just so full with emotions and detours, like this detour that's about to happen right now. So today we're taking a little break from sewing to help a friend get engaged, which obviously brings some mixed emotions, but the overall overwhelming one is definitely excitement. Like if someone deserves to be happy, my friend Janessa deserves to be happy and her boyfriend is fantastic, but he lives out of state. So preparing a spot for a proposal is obviously very difficult for him. He also has an interesting background. He was raised Amish Mennonite, so he's not really familiar with like the traditions of a typical proposal. In fact, he said he had to Google which finger the ring went on because the Amish Mennonites don't wear wedding rings. They grow beards to show that they're married. I don't, I don't think the women do. I don't know what the women do. I digress. So because of all of this, I have been honored with the task of preparing the area and hiding behind a tree to take Take some pictures and videos. So I hope you don't mind if I take you on a slight detour to watch my friend get engaged. Right now I'm handling the delicate situation of making sure that there can be a little surprise party for her after the proposal, but I still want her to be able to get the joy to tell all her friends that they're engaged. So I texted my friends and tried to make them think that I'm having a breakup party for myself. Which for the record, I would not throw myself a breakup party. This is not something I'm celebrating. Just to get them all there. Then hopefully that can turn into an engagement party. Very fun little game. So around 6.30, my henchman, aka my dad, and I set up the scene. Roland would be there with the precious cargo, aka Janessa, at 7. I had to leave my door unlocked because my party guests were set to arrive at my house at 7.15. Some little biker kids watched us decorate, then loitered around to see what would happen. And what would happen indeed. The stage is set, now I just gotta go hide behind a tree over there and lie in wait like a predator for their prey. Their sweet, romantic, wholesome prey. proposal was beautiful. Roland did an amazing job, and with a little guidance from Janessa, he even put the ring on the right finger, meaning the left finger, the correct finger. They had 10 minutes or so of blissful peace until some feral woman jumped out from behind a tree to take more pictures of them. <laughs> yes. Thank you. If nothing else, I hope this little subplot slash detour reminded you that love is more than just pain. It can be agony, but it can also be joyous, life bringing, warm, and sweet. I know I needed that reminder. Now I'm jogging back to my house so that I can greet my party guests before Janessa gets there. Thank you all for coming to my party. My guests were understandably perplexed with the tardiness of their host, but confusion soon gave way to jubilation when Janessa arrived with her new fiance. Ugh, doesn't the word fiance just fill you with a sense of Frenchness? I like feeling bilingual. I'm not though. Only cool people are bilingual, like Rollin. A high up with uh, the gymnastic throat for me. Hira and a glycy. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you've been absorbing every bit of the positivity that abounds out of their love, because now we're going back to my pathetic life. Sorry, I shouldn't call my life pathetic, because I do recognize that I have one of the most blessed, lucky, privileged lives you could possibly have. But when I'm at the lowest of my lows, I can't seem to reconcile the highness of my highs to my current situation. All I ever wanted to do on the internet was be a distraction from the hard parts of life. But I think it might be important for you to know that I am, unfortunately, painfully human. If for no other reason than just to remind you of the grass is always greener trap. While I'm incredibly grateful for my life and career, this isn't where I always wanted to be at this age. I thought I'd be on my fourth kid by now. Yet I know somewhere out there is a mom, sleep deprived and sobbing as she washes puke stained blankets, wishing she'd stayed single, free, and independent. Fantasizing about a life like mine while I sit here fantasizing about a life like hers. Another example, I think every oldest child envies the youngest child's life, the carefree recklessness, while I, the youngest child in both my immediate and extended family, have long felt like life is just this never-ending saga of people leaving or dying and me being powerless to keep them in my life. And this recent breakup just feels like one more crippling blow. This sounds so obnoxiously simple, but there's nothing I hate more than when someone's there and then they're just not there anymore. I know, though, there are still so many people who are here. To summarize, we need to be grateful. Comparison is the thief of joy, and gratefulness is our best weapon against that thief. But there are times where no amount of gratefulness can erase the grief of a grieving person, and that's okay.
the Bible says there is a time for weeping. The last few months have been that time for me. And if it's that time for you too, you're allowed to cry. Luckily though, the Bible also says there's a time for rejoicing. I can't wait for that time. For now though, I'll settle for tiny glimpses of rejoicing. Like when I kiss my bird or my brother's dog or my mom hugs me. When I trim my dad's arm hair or see my friend beaming with joy. When my sister drives two hours just to give me vitamins and a pep talk or my brother holds me like a baby and my dad stays up till 1am watching survival shows with me even though he's a morning person. When my mom and stepdad can't figure out how to use a fire extinguisher. When most of the lights are burned out and it says CVS heresy and it reminds you of how so many people in the church view antidepressants and it's kind of ironic or when friends are just the best. <laughs> Sorry if I'm divulging too much and being too open and emotional. I know this is very unusual for me. It's just these are all things I was going to write in my journal, but my journal's upstairs, so. I'm telling you. But while we're at it, why stop there? After Courtney gave me and half my family highlights, it was time to look pretty, which seemed like the hardest thing in the world. After wearing makeup every day since I was 11, I recently went a whole week without it. Felt kind of weird, kind of good to have it on my face again. Oh yeah, this video is supposed to be about a dress. Have you ever heard of the placebo effect? It's this scientific phenomenon that allows you to get drunk off of pure milk. recommend fake drunkness and admit that I've become something of an expert at it. It's kind of been necessary in order to make it 27 whole years without consuming a single drop of alcohol while still enjoying weddings and various family get-togethers. Fake drunk is a lifestyle, and while not a particularly healthy one, it's healthier than being real drunk. My only concern, I guess, is that this tough season of life might turn me into a fake alcoholic. Before I depart, there's something my pride compels me to tell you. I've been a big fan of the song Long Long Time by Linda Ronstadt since long before Frank and Bill were even conceived of. I've liked it since before, it was cool, if you will. And yes, it is at the top of the list of my recommendations of songs to blast while fake drunk. Let's see if it looks cute with wings. Guess who I am? Hint, pretend I have a diaper on and I'm stupid. Stupid. Hi. Why are you so scared of wings? This doesn't make sense. You think I can fit my head through one of these? No. I'm Cupid and this is my heart. <laughs> Now don't forget to treat yourself by following the link in my description, shopping ThreadUp, and using the code MAKERA for 35% off. Mm -hmm.